All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, there's a picture of myself. Um, I'm a customer support team lead here at Bloomerang. I've been here for just under two years. Um, really enjoy a lot of technical stuff. Um, I play a lot of music, but I really enjoy uh, running sound and that kind of harbored a love for uh, getting into the, the tech world here at Bloomerang. Um, so love being able to assist you guys and, and all the nonprofit friends that we've made here at Bloomerang. And it, I will pardon my dog, Rocco, um, since most of us are probably working from home. He is not too far from me, and it is almost the time that the mailman is coming by my house, so I won't hesitate if, <laughs> if you hear any barking in the background. So today, just for a quick uh, summary of our agenda, we're going to be talking about how to set up a, an email campaign, um, specifically how to set up a campaign that's centered around uh, the COVID-19 um, virus. So we're going to be looking at how to set, find the audience you need um, and then how to kind of set up and schedule um, an initial email and also the appropriate follow-up emails for each um, bucket of your donors. So here's a, a, a just some bullet points for us. So we're, we're going to highlight the new um, templates that we've created just for um, this season that we are all going through, we have some some helpful email templates just to get us started. Um, and then we'll also go through those initial emails and those follow up emails. And the main thing that we're gonna be um, talking about is this crisis email campaigns um, and just making sure we select the audience and um, finding the right timeline in the templates. Um, so we'll, we'll go into further detail, but essentially we're gonna be looking at though once we send our initial email, the follow-ups will be um, those who have donated, how to send a thank you right away, and we'll even look at how to automatically send a thank you email um, using Bloomerang forms. And then for those that opened your email um, but did not donate or did not um, follow through on that call to action, um, how to set up an, an, a separate email to send to that specific group of people. And then we'll look at sending a, another email for um, those who did not open the email, how to once again uh, hone in on that group and send an email specific to um, that group. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to jump into my demo database. Hopefully everyone can see my, uh, this should look familiar if you've been in Bloomerang before. So this is my dashboard. And first things first, I want to show off these, these new email templates. So you might have already seen them already. Um, so if I click on the email icon over here on the left side, and go to my email templates homepage or my list here. If I click new, you'll notice there's a new option for uh, COVID-19 template. So if I click on here, um, we have eight new templates um, that have some uh, kind of pre-filled language in each. Um, so we've had some nonprofit researchers and experts um, help us uh, put together these templates. Um, Obviously, they need to be tailored to your organization's mission and um, and kind of the the, the language in, that you use um, with your constituents and your donor base. But hopefully, it gives you a, a good launching pad and maybe even gives you a couple ideas if you feel sort of stuck on how to start that email. Um, each of these has um, a little bit different of a message, a little bit different of a starting point. So um, whether it's just checking in with your donor base, um, how you're addressing the situation. Um, calling for volunteers or how to uh, handle a postponed event or cancel large event. Um, and then we even have some for how to take your volunteers and turn those into donors or maybe some language on how to um, and bolster your, your volunteer base to, to become donors as well. Um, so these are really handy. I'm excited that we have these. Um, and again, these starter designs should help you just uh, get this email campaign going. So the first thing we need to do is start this initial email and we need to select the audience um, that we are wanting to target. So for this case, we should, I'm gonna start with a report um, to get that group of people. So I'm gonna click on my reports icon and click go to reports list. And I'm gonna select new and build from scratch and I'm gonna select constituents here. Now, there could be, this is really up to you, the, the audience that you want to initially start with, whether that is all of your donors um, or maybe as more of your, just your recurring donors um, or even like your large donors or your top donors. Um, and 
today's example, I'm going to be going after what we call high potential donors, which is going to be our donors that have both a, a high engagement level in Bloomerang and also um, a high generosity score from the donor, uh, donor search scan. So to pull that particular list, I'm going to click this add filter and I'm going to look up um, engagement level. And then from engagement level is, I'm gonna select warm, hot, and on fire. So I'm gonna leave out the, the cold and cool crowd and click okay. So that's pulling so far everyone who has that engagement level. And I also want those that have that uh, generosity score that it's also warm, hot, or on fire. So I'm gonna click the green and, and I'm gonna look up generosity. And then same thing, I'm gonna look up just warm, hot, and on fire. Now, I, I have an issue with just my demo because most of my constituents don't have a real address. So when I add this filter, I'm gonna get probably the only <laughs> real person in my demo, which is our CRO. Um, so for your example, you, you might have to tailor this down to what you need. And in my case, I'm going to include everybody that has a gener no matter what they are. So I'll just say generosity is anything. So that brings me back to our uh, 32. So real, realistically, and I say ideally, I guess I should say, um, we're gonna be pulling our high potential donors. I at least want just a, a few emails just to sh show off how our emails are gonna look um, once we send these. Um, but you can filter this report however you like. I'm gonna save this and go to reports list. I'm just gonna call this, uh, let's just do all caps, COVID report. There we go. So that is now saved and we can see that should be at the top of my uh, report list if I sort by date. And there's that. Okay, so now let's start our uh, email. So I'll click on emails again, email templates and new, and we'll select one of these COVID-19 templates. I'm gonna start with this what we're doing template. So I'm gonna click on this starter design and this is gonna start loading um, the email editor. And just so we know, this is the new email editor that we've released um, just a few months back. Super handy, there's lots of features, um, including uh, what I love is this preview layout button so you can see how it looks on desktop and mobile. Um, all of our designs now that are using the new editor are mobily responsive. So you'll see things um, adjust and resize according to the, the screen that's viewing it. So first, let's just jump to the details tab before we kind of get into some of this design. So I'll click on details. Everything on the left um, is gonna be sort of internal information. So just how you're naming the email template. Uh, so I'm just gonna call this COVID-19 uh, campaign email. And for purpose, I'm gonna select impact or cultivation. Um, in this case, since this initial email, it's really whatever you are deciding to categorize this email's purpose. Um, if we were to be acknowledging donations, I would select acknowledgement. But in this case, we are more or less doing a check-in. Um, and I'm gonna select some email interests. I'm gonna select both for this case. And for email details, this is what your donors or your constituents will see. So for subject, um, you wanna have something engaging. Um, and again, this a lot of these uh, fields that we're coming across are gonna be up to you. And you'll probably hear me say that multiple times throughout this class is it really is up to you because um, at the end of the day, it, it matters on how you're gonna tailor it down to your mission and, and your organization, uh, the brand of your, your nonprofit um, and the language that you use and um, the familiarity that your donors have with you. So you will know best so in this case, I'm just gonna kind of have some filler text, but um, let's just call this uh, COVID-19 update. Uh, that's good for now. I'm gonna put my name in here and then we are gonna put, for my sake, I'll just put my work email in here for now. It'd probably be best practice to put um, an organization email or some sort of uh, development email that you have. And this will be what your constituents will reply to. So um, if they hit reply on an email, it will go back to whichever email you select in this from email. Okay, so then I have all my details set. Now I'm gonna click filter. 
The nice part about building a report is it's pretty easy to add that list of people in an email. So if I, since I have a constituent based uh, email, we can see, cause I have constituent filters right here. Um, I'm going to click this green ad filter. I'm going to look up is in a constituent report, select a report. And if I just type in COVID, there's that. And I don't, no need to copy. If I just select, select okay, it will, tie this report in with my email. So if I was to make changes to my report um, after the fact, it would update when I refresh my email template. So I'll click OK, and that's showing 31 now. It looks like one of mine might have been marked as inactive or deceased, which is why it's not matching to 32. OK, so I have my uh, my constituents here in the list, or my, my I should say my high potential donors um, in this list. So now I'm going to go to design and we're just going to change a few things just to show how we can customize this email a little bit more. <clears throat> so again, we have um, some pre-filled content in here um, that might just give you a little bit of a launching pad to writing up your initial email. If I want to customize this a little bit more, let's say I want to update this image. Um, these people should not be touching hands in this climate. So <laughs> let's change this image. <laughs> and I'm going to go to my file manager. And if I just go to my files, and I think I have some in my Scott images folder. Let's put Blossom in here. So I'll find Blossom, click insert. There we go. And if I keep clicking on this image, I can change the content properties. So I'm just going to change the auto width and bring that down a little bit. Now, if I want to add, let's say a merge field, um, so it it addresses uh, the constituent that we're sending the email to. I could highlight and let's say instead of there, I wanted to say their informal name. So I'll, I'll highlight and then this toolbar will pop up and I click more, insert merge field. And then here I have uh, this new screen. If I look up informal name, if I insert there, you'll see now there are uh, an asterisk and curly brackets. So that is showing that there is a merge field here that will populate with their informal name. You'll see some other uh, merge fields in the, in the content here. There's one for the organization name um, and we could add some more if we wanted to. For now, I'm gonna add, or really just change this button down here. So if you wanted to add a button, you just click on this content tab and you could drag a button um, right into the design. And then you can remove it just by clicking and selecting this trash can. Uh, what I wanna do is link this to our my online giving form that I've set up um, through Bloomerang. So um, what I can do is if I wanted to edit the, the label of this, maybe I just wanna say help your neighbors, let's say today. And maybe I wanna change the background color of my button. I see we have button options here on the right. Um, I'll just change this to like a green, there we go. And then if I wanna add a link, here I have this action. So if I still say selected on this button, um, here on the action side, and there's open web page and URL. So I'm going to go to my website and highlight my URL and uh, copy that and paste that back in there. Great. So now that button will uh, send our, our donors or potential donors to our website. And last thing is I'm just going to add some social icons. So if I click on this content tab again and I drag this social uh, content block down here. I click on uh, this content block and then here I could change like the, the style of these buttons. So I'll just uh, change those. And then here I could link to my organization's media pages. And I'll remove LinkedIn. Maybe I just want Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Okay. So this is a, a very uh, quick draft of this initial email, but at least we have um, something started and this will at least get you started um, for your email campaign. Now, if I was to click preview layout, I can see what it looks like both on desktop and mobile. So I can see my button is nice and large, takes up most of the screen or the width of the screen. Uh, text is a good size. All right. So you can also send a test. I always recommend um, clicking send test making sure everything kind of lands where you want it to and it kind of pops up how you're expecting. Um, but once you're ready, then you can just click save and and then preview. 
And what's nice is um, on this preview page, uh, we can see all of our recipients um, as well as those who are going to be skipped based on either a bad email or who have opted out. So I can see out of my 31 constituents, I had 20 email addresses available and of those 20, 14 are ready to send. I can click on design preview and I can look through the first 100 um, recipients exactly how they are. So in the case for Big Bird, the informal name is just Big. And here we go for Greg Brady, it shows hi Greg. So it looks like the merge field is working just fine. And I can see my organization name is popping in there too. And here's the link and I can see that is gonna be going to my website. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and send this one. Um, just so we can kind of see an example of that being sent. You can also schedule this for another time if you were to choose schedule for later. So I'm going to hit send now. This will go to those 14. I'm ready to do so. All right, and that should take, that should be sending um, almost immediately. Sometimes it can take about 10 minutes or so to get in the queue. Um, but for the most part, that should be sent out. So now I'm going to go back to my, I just heard my phone buzz, so I know I got my email. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is the initial email that we're going to set up. Uh, one thing I kind of want to uh, trace back to is the online giving form, um, because we're, we're going to be looking at that for these, um, this confirmation email we're about to set up. Um, so in order to automatically thank the donors who use your Bloomerang online form, so here, let me pull up my site again. Here's an example of, of a Bloomerang online uh, giving form that I've, it's pretty simple, very straightforward. Um, but if they were to hit enter payment and then submit, um, we can customize the email that essentially thanks them for that donation. And so that's what we're gonna do now is um, set up that thank you email. But um, what I would recommend, and we have an Academy class on this setup as well, is, is having a campaign for um, this email campaign so I, I created a campaign just called COVID-19. That way we can easily track the donations that are coming in through my form. Um, and I have that assigned to my online giving form. So any donation coming through my online giving form will be marked with COVID-19. So to customize that, I'll click on email templates and we're gonna do new. And I'll start from one of these COVID ones again. Um, this time, it, at this point, since we're doing a thank you email, really any of these will work. I'm going to just select uh, this how are you one. And once that loads, we can adjust the design how we like. So if I wanted to go in here again, maybe I just want to put in their informal name again. I can do that. And since we're, they already made a donation, this will be a uh, online donation, thank you. Really no need to add another call to action button. If I wanted to add my social icons again, I could do so down here. And let's say I want that same collection I had earlier. So I'll click content properties and I'll use this gray scheme. And you could adjust this however you like. Um, just for the sake of brevity, I'm gonna keep this pretty plain, but just so we can get the idea. But um, this would be a matter of just, making sure they are thanked for their donation. Okay. So next, since this is gonna be attached to a form, we, we won't need to um, filter this at all. Um, since it'll, whoever submits that donation, the email they use, um, it will automatically send. But um, if you don't have a Bloomerang online giving form, then what I would recommend is changing the email type to a transaction. So sorry about that. If I click on change filter type right here, um, then I can have the option to change this to a transaction email or interaction email. And so in order to acknowledge your transaction, I'm gonna change to transaction. And then, so now we'll see we we start with transaction filters. And for the details tab, and this is an important, um, distinction is since we are making an, a confirmation email, it will need to be a transaction email. And so I'll, I'll just call this um, COVID-19 uh, donation, thank you. The purpose must be set to acknowledgement. So I'm gonna mark this as acknowledgement. I'm gonna select all my interests at this point. Um, 
And for this, I'll say thank you for your donation. If I can type, there we go. And this can also be from me. And we'll put in my email. Okay, so now I have the correct purpose and I have this set to transaction. If you don't have a giving form, I was gonna say, um, if you need to send this manually, then you might consider adding a filter for the campaign, such as uh, campaign, and I'm gonna do COVID-19. Um, so this would only pull your transaction. I don't have any submissions yet, um, but in, if you were to have um, transactions marked with that campaign, this would be a way to manually send this thank you. Um, I don't need it in this case, so I'm gonna have just no filters. And as far as the design, this is, uh, this is good for now. So I'll click save and uh, keep editing. So now if I go to my form settings, so I'll click on settings and then website integration and go to my online giving forms. And now I'll go to my COVID-19 form that I've set up. So right here, uh, about three boxes down, we have this confirmation email. So this will be the email that is sent out directly after they submit. So right now it's set to the default, but now we should see, yep, COVID-19 donation, thank you. So any transaction email with the purpose of acknowledgement can be used, um, but only one can be assigned. So I'm assigning my COVID-19 donation, thank you. I've set myself up for a notification email. And you can even see um, I've, uh, marked every donation that goes through this form. Uh, it'll be earmarked with COVID-19. And I even set up a special appeal as well. So now my form is all set up. So I'll just hit next and save and preview. And once I hit publish, that's all I have to do. So that has updated my form. So now if someone was to go to my website and uh, fill all this out, and once they hit submit, uh, they would receive that particular email that we just set up. So I know that was probably a lot. We kind of ran through that, but I'm happy to uh, go over that again towards the end. Um, but that would be a way to set up that automatic uh, thank you email um, for those donors that respond to your initial uh, campaign email. So the next thing we're going to set up are the two follow-up, two different follow-up emails. So we're going to set up one for those who opened the email, but they have not donated yet. So we're gonna start again with, um, we'll do a new template. So I'll click emails and email templates. And so I'm gonna do new again, and we'll do another COVID-19 template. For this one, we'll wanna do a constituent um, type email. So I will select um, this one again, just as a good starting spot. And let's start with uh, the details again. So just for the internal purposes, um, I'll call this uh, follow-up email. And we'll do um, opened, uh, but no donation, something like that. This case, uh, it could also be impact cultivation. Um, or whichever you're deciding, or if you want to even call it a solicitation, I suppose. Um, and I'm going to also mark my two, two email interests that I have prepared. And for subject, um, again, this is, this is up to you as far as how you're wanting to um, follow up with those who have interacted with your organization by opening this e email. Um, so in this case, I might just say, um, Something like that for now. And I'm gonna put my name in here as well and my email address. Okay. Now, if I click on filter, to narrow this down to those that opened the email but did not donate, uh, we're gonna use this include filter. So click this green add filter. I'm gonna look up has interactions. And we need specific interactions. So we're looking for that specific subject. And I'll click this green add filter. And I'm gonna look up subject. 
Now I have to use the subject that was on my email. So not just the name of the email, but if I was to go to the details tab. And so if we remember, I just called it COVID-19 update. So I'll put COVID-19 update as the subject and click okay. And if I click the green and down here, I'm gonna look up is opened. And I'll leave that as is opened. So right now we're looking at um, any constituent that has the email interaction. So that's this COVID-19 update email and they have opened uh, this email. So very interesting enough, I've had seven. So <laughs> seven already have opened my email. Um, so Tom Haverford and Michael Scott are already on it. So now this is everyone who has opened it, but we need to remove anybody who has made a donation. So down here in this exclude section, I'll click this blue or, and I'm gonna look up has transactions. And this is, this is the key of why having a campaign or appeal makes it easy. Um, I'm gonna do has any transactions, specific transactions, and green ad filter. I can look up just the campaign if I wanted to. So here I could do campaign is COVID-19. This would be one way. So this would be um, any donation that's been marked with that campaign. So if this has been going prior to this email campaign, you might wanna get a little bit more specific. And to do so, you could do uh, this green and, and you could look up a date range. And let's say I only want it from today and on. So I could do during to between, and I only want 331, 2020. I'll leave the second one blank. So this will be anybody who has a, a donation um, marked with that campaign starting either today or, or moving on. So I'll click okay. So I'll probably have the same results in this case. Um, but if someone was to have clicked on the email and um, made a donation from my giving form, uh, they would be removed. So this is how you're wanting to set up the filters for this particular um, group of people. So my filters are good. Let's go back to the design. Um, just because I want to remove the, the hands that are touching, I'm gonna change this out again. <laughs> we have to practice social distancing. <laughs> Actually, let me just go back to my files again. And we'll put Blossom in there again. Okay. Now for this one, I'm, I'm wanting to um, have a stronger call to action or maybe a, a little bit more of a direct um, action they can take. So uh, this will be something that you have to decide um, since every organization is a little bit different in, in the, the actions you're wanting your donors to take or the actions you're wanting your constituents to take. Um, but I would, I would highly recommend not just copying the same email that was sent earlier and um, you know, maybe just changing a few words, but um, really review um, the language of the email and make sure that it is, it's hitting this particular group. So these are people who are engaged. So they are opening emails. So they are curious um, and they are, um, at least wanting to see an update from your organization. So keeping them in mind um, and also having a push um, to have them create that action. So um, again, you could customize this button um, however you like. So perhaps it's maybe a different call to action. Um, maybe instead of just saying donate now, um, it might be a, a, a specific impact. So um, maybe it's just make an impact. Um, and your neighborhood or, or whatever is closest to your organization's mission. Um, and then once again, I could link um, to my giving page or if there's any other action you're wanting them to take. So in this case, I'm gonna link my giving page once again. And let's just go back to green. There we go. Okay. So this would be a great way to, so let's just review everything. So we have, um, maybe we need to make another merge field here. So I'll highlight there and never hurts to do things a couple of times just so we can see what it looks like. I'll do informal name once again. Okay. 
my filters look great. So once again, we're going to double check, has any specific interactions? Only people have opened the email, removing anyone who has those transactions. So now I can click save and preview again. So we'll see my list of people. So seven emails are going to be expected to be sent out. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'll click send. I'm going to do schedule for later. So I want to schedule this one two weeks out. So instead of the 31st, um, we are going to do the 14th. So Diana just sent out a poll because we are curious what your organizations are. What, what would you expect to um, send that follow-up action? Um, would you want to just do one week out or two weeks out or even longer? Because um, that number is is determined by uh, your organization's culture and, and the, the culture of your people and your donors. Um, perhaps you have people who many want to uh, mail in a check. And so it might take a little bit longer and you wanna have enough of that buffer time um, to allow them to get those donations in. Um, most people might be giving online. So maybe only a week out or 10 days out. Um, so really it's up to you for this purpose. And today I'm just gonna do two weeks. So I'll do the 14th and Right now it's set to 3.15 Eastern Standard Time, um, and that's fine with me. You might have a little bit more of a strategic time with your donors, um, so that is something that you can um, select um, regarding to your guys' research. So I'll click Save, and now we'll see my email right here, follow-up for the people who've opened but no donation is scheduled for the 14th. So that is done. I've got that checked off my list. The next a uh, group of people, um, so that other email type we're gonna build are those who did not open that first email. Um, so those who did receive that initial email, but um, so they received it, but did not open. So just so uh, we can kind of see the rhythm of everything again, I'm gonna start a new template. I'll kind of go a little bit faster through this. And I'll select the how are you one. And let's go to details. So I'm gonna name this email a uh, follow-up. And this is um, unopened emails. Purpose, I'll do impact again, all my email interests. And for subject, um, again, all of these are up to you. So let's see. Let's just do, um, I'll do my name here and my email. Okay. So now to go back to my filter, I'll leave this as a constituent based email. And so we're gonna do um, only those who have res received this email but did not open. So click this green add filter. We're gonna look up has interactions. And these are specific interactions. So now I have my interaction filters here. I'll click this green add filter. I'll look up subject. And that should, oh, has my email in there. So COVID-19 update was, that was the uh, subject line of my initial email. So I'll click okay. And now I'm gonna click this green and, and the only thing different is I'm gonna look up is opened. And I'm going to change is. So anytime you see a green and blue ring or even a little uh, drop down arrow, it means there's an option just waiting behind there. So I'm going to change this to is not. So now I'm only going to be people, only the people um, that who did not open the email will be pulled in. So I have eight who opened my email but have not opened it. Now for an extra measure of precaution, um, let's say you do have people who perhaps they would get the email and they might not open it, but they um, might have gone to your website anyway. Maybe they saw from another post or just from in person and they made a donation online. So we wanna still make sure that we exclude those um, that have that donation already made. So we'll do the exact same exclude filter. So if I click the blue or and look up has transactions and we want specific transactions. And now below transaction filters, I'm gonna click this green ad filter and I'm gonna look up my campaign and I'll select COVID-19, click okay. 
And if I want to, I can also narrow down the date range. So not just any campaign of the, or not just any COVID-19 transaction, but I click the green and I can look up a specific date range. And I will do during to between. And I'm gonna do anything after today. Okay. So none of these people have made a donation, but they also have not opened the email. So this all looks great. I can double check my design if I need to. Um, so in this case, we're wanting to tailor this to people who did not open the email. So this might be a good time to have maybe a more engaging subject line. So um, that would be in the details tab. Um, maybe it, it needs to be um, an even more uh, accessible call to action. So if we want to add in a button to this, I can just drag this button content. And um, perhaps you, you need something that is, um, in this case, I'll just keep something simple. Um, my examples are probably not super helpful as far as my wording. So I'm sorry if, if we're looking for specific wording today, but um, hopefully this just is able to jumpstart you and, and uh, at least the practices and, and kind of the technical aspect of setting these up. So um, for this case, we have a button here. It's gonna be linking to my site again. So I will also link this. And okay. So my design looks good, my filters are set and I'll hit save and preview. So now I have eight people found and looks like seven emails of those eight were found. And so I'll hit schedule for later. So in this case, once again, I'm gonna keep these on the same day. Um, so I'm gonna email both my, those who opened the email and those who did not open the email on the 14th, um, around 3.15 Eastern. I click the 14th. Yeah, 14th is fine. And I'll click save. And that's all set up. So now we just kind of walk through, or I should say almost jog through, uh, setting up three emails. Um, so we had our initial email that went out. So the campaign email, we've set up this donation thank you, which will be any online donations, uh, will get an immediate immediate acknowledgement. And then we have scheduled um, those that open the email but have not donated yet. And then we also have set up uh, those that have not opened their email. And a, a question that tends to come up that I'll, I'll kind of go ahead and answer is, uh, the filters will be applied the day the email is sent. So if someone, happens to open their email, let's say after I've, so I've already created this template here, but let's say uh, tomorrow someone opens their email. Um, right before Bloomerang sends that email, we, we look through that filter and if someone doesn't meet the criteria, then they'll get removed from the list. So you can rest assured that those filters will be applied um, on the day of sending or actually at the moment of sending. So even if someone gives just a couple minutes before that email is scheduled to send, um, they will be safely removed from that list. So I, we have about 20 minutes. Um, I wasn't planning on going the full hour, but I, I wanted for myself as far as demoing. So I want to give enough time for Q and A. Um, the last thing I want to just touch on is tracking emails. Um, so we can see this, the campaign email I sent to the 14 today. If I click on that, you'll notice now there is a, a new tracking tab at the top. Um, so if I click on that, I'll get the statistics for the delivery rate as well as the open rate. So I can see 86 were delivered, a few were dropped, and a few were even bounced um, out of the, the queue. And then I can click on each part of these circles and see who is open. So I can see here's the seven that opened, and here's the five that looks like that were unopened. And same over here, I can see the delivered rate. And what's nice is you can also export this list to Excel if you need a, um, just a list of those who maybe open the emails or if there's some troubled, uh, troublesome emails, like some dropped emails, I can click on this dropped portion and maybe I need to export this list and, and kind of comb through my, my email addresses. Okay, so that, that's a um, kind of a bird's eye view of setting up this email campaign. Um, I know Diana has been taking some of your questions in the chat, um, but I am happy to start uh, looking through some of these questions. So let's see. 
or I'll start with this first one. So if you have matching gift funds for your campaign, is there a way to acknowledge an email blast where the campaign is and how much of the match has been assessed? How would this uh, impact the campaign status on the home page? Okay, that's a great question. Um, so if you are having a matching gifts fund um, and so you're trying to acknowledge an email blast where the campaign is and how much of the match has been assessed. Okay, so that will probably be determined how you're setting up those matching gifts in your database. Um, and we'd be happy to take a look as our support team afterwards. Um, as far as I will say the campaign status on the dashboard, this will pull in um, just all raised transactions for your progress. So you can see raised right now. So that'll be any pledges, any donations, um, or any recurring donation payments. Um, that have been recorded in your database. Um, so as long as those are recorded as donations, as pledges or recurring payments, and they've been tagged with that campaign, um, that will update your progress meter. As far as in the email blast of acknowledging that uh, matching gift, I suppose um, it would be determined how you're setting it up. If you are using um, potentially a soft credit, um, you might be able to show in the email uh, the original gift and then maybe even the soft credit um, from someone else's gift or that matching entity. Um, that's what sometimes we recommend for matching gifts um, is you can have the the person who or the person or the entity that is signing that check or, or giving that that matching gift um, would be a separate transaction but you could soft credit that transaction um, under the the donor's name. Um, that way they can kind of maybe see both of those transactions. So that can be a little bit of a, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and it could probably use some a more of a detailed answer. So I'd be happy to go over that um, through an email. If you want to chat our, our support team, we'd be happy to walk you through that. Uh, what is dropped email? That's a great question. So uh, dropped email. So if I go back to this tracking tab, you'll see a few that dropped. Um, this can be a, a couple of things. Um, so when our, uh, we, we run all emails through what we call SendGrid, which is our, uh, the sending platform that sends all of the, the, the mass emails through Bloomerang. Um, when something is dropped, it just means that there, for some reason it was unable to reach that inbox. Um, it could be just a matter of uh, the inbox is full or potentially there is an issue with uh, how emails are quarantined in that particular inbox. Um, and then for something to be um, or I'm sorry, that is all for bounced. So bounce is if there's any reason that that email has not reached the inbox. If some, if an email bounces multiple times, let me go to this tracking tab. Um, so here is bounce. So any particular reason, we can even see the reason why it bounced. So in this case, um, this Bill Paxton email.com, um, it was not able to reach that particular email. So most likely because this email address is not valid. So this bounced, whereas um, those that drop are where they have um, bounced multiple times and they will, they will drop from attempting to send again. Uh, so email deliverability is a, a big uh, kind of, I, I don't wanna say complicated, but there's a lot of moving parts. Um, there are some steps you can take to help your deliverability settings. Um, one is just making sure you're entering a, a, a good and valid email address into your database. Um, second, and I have these articles ready to go, um, is setting up SPF. And let me zoom in. This is one of our help articles. Um, and I think we'll be sending a few links out. Um, SPF is a way to authenticate your domain name um, with Bloomerang and with SendGrid. Um, that way your emails have a better chance of landing in the inbox and, and not in spam and not in any quarantined inbox. So this is help article um, walks through every single step of how to check the quote unquote spamminess of your email and how to um, help authenticate uh, your email across inboxes. We also have this other one for setting yourself up for success with emails in Bloomerang. Um, that all can be found if I go back to my demo here. If I click on this email icon and deliverability settings, you will need all your organization info filled out. Um, I would recommend a phone number instead of just dashes. Um, and then in this case, uh, here's a link here for configuring your domain. 
So this will take you right to that SPF article. Great question, so. Protocol to help people whitelist their email. So um, as far as white labeling or white listing, we, do, we can do that from the support team um, as well. So if there are further issues with deliverability, um, we can send you some C name records that would be added to your domain. So that would be something, it, it's kind of a half and half where we can send you the name or those records, um, but you would have to have access to your domain settings um, to allow those, uh, to enter those records into your DNS settings. Um, that is something that you can always email us to support um, if you're ready to do that. Um, or you can live chat us if you click on this uh, question mark up here. And just say you're, you're looking to um, have your have your domain whitelisted or white labeled with Bloomerang. Um, our team can get that knocked out pretty quick and make sure you're verified. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, happy to take the last few. We have about I suppose ten more minutes on the hour. Um, happy to go over anything else or anything else in the email editor that was. Um, a little hazy. Okay, well, I think that is um, a great place to stop then. So I think we covered a lot. Um, oh, here's one last question. I'll see if I can get that in there. So, so this is best when a campaign is already set up in Bloomring and we're using the web donation form. That was the example that I used today. Um, if it's not necessary to have one of Bloomring online giving form, um, but I, I would I would encourage you to at least check it out. Um, it's it's a great way to have um, be able to accept donations online and have those automatically recorded in Bloomring so you're not having to import donations or manually enter donations um, every time there is a gift. Um, so you can access that by clicking on settings and website integration and in online giving forms. Um, so yes, I, I did set up a, a new and specific giving form for um, this campaign. I, you could use an existing giving form if you, if you would like. Um, that's kind of a whole separate topic of, of adding that and setting it up. I believe our class um, from just last week or a few weeks ago with John and setting up um, online giving forms for, for COVID-19. It, it's an excellent class to look. It's already recorded on YouTube um, and you can check that out. Um, but he walks through how to set your giving forms up um, specifically for this campaign. Um, but I, I would recommend creating a separate uh, campaign or appeal just to track these donations. It makes it a lot easier to know where everything is going. Um, otherwise you'd have to filter by date or the form that was used. So uh, many times a campaign or appeal is a great way to go. Corporate video messages. Great question. So um, email, mass email overall uh, typically will not uh, allow for embedded audio or embedded video. So, um, and that's across any mass email provider, whether that's through us or even through MailChimp, um, just because embedded audio or embedded video, and what I mean by that is actually allowing the video or, or audio to play inside the inbox, um, usually will get caught by spam filters or caught um, by any kind of inbox settings. Um, and it, typically it's just not allowed in mass email builders. So um, what we do, so if I go back to my campaign email, if I wanted to edit this, you can um, create a link and we even have a handy way of attaching a, a thumbnail. Uh, so we have this video icon. So if I was to add this um, maybe near the top, let's just put that right there. I could put in any uh, URL here. So I click add a video URL. Um, if it's a YouTube or Vimeo, it will automatically generate a thumbnail preview. Um, so if I was to go to, let's see one of our academy classes. And if I enter that in, there we go. You'll see that it will automatically make a thumbnail and it'll even create a play icon um, directly on the, on the image itself. So that will create a link 
directly to the video that you're, uh, you've added here and they can click on that and that will direct them to that video. Some of our elderly donors have marked your email spam. Is there any way to add them again or will they forever be unable to receive your email? That is a very great question. Um, so if someone has marked your email as spam and it is um, in a sense forever labeled like that in their inbox, there, there's not much um, that Bloomerang could do from our end. Um, you might try sending a personal email from another email address. Um, so I don't know if you have a, another organization email, um, most likely it had to be a separate domain. So whether it was a personal email um, or maybe just another work email. Um, otherwise you might have to call them and just see if you can have them um, be removed from that spam. Um, there are ways that we can help alleviate that if they've been blocked for some reason from, um, we do a scan of emails to determine if they are valid or good emails. So if their email has been marked as bad or invalid, our team can reverse that flag. Um, but as far as the email, if they have been uh, marking emails as spam, uh, that would probably need a little bit more of a direct intervention. Can I import email addresses? Um, so you can import um, a, a large list of emails. However, everything in Bloomerang is, is centered around the donor. So um, we will, you will have to have at least a first name and a last name. So um, you could use the import feature down here. So if I click on this uh, cloud icon down here, here you could do an import um, and you could just do, as long as you had columns for first name, last name and email addresses. Um, that would be uh, all you would need to um, import all of those constituents into your database. But yes, they would have to be, uh, for your follow-up question, they would have to be uh, a profile in Bloomerang. So we, we don't have a way to just um, send to a separate um, sheet of email addresses. Um, so we'll have to have a profile attached to them. Yeah, great questions overall. This is good stuff. I'll wait around for a couple more minutes if there's any other uh, questions that are still out there. And just in case if, if it was a question, if, if you are not wanting to use the new email editor and um, you already have campaigns or templates set up in the past, you can continue to use um, older templates or what we call the, from our legacy editor. Um, so if there is um, a past template that you need to use and you want to update, you could always uh, go down to, let's say I have a bunch of test ones as you can see, um, but you can click here and copy and that will allow you to um, open up the legacy editor, which we can see here. But you'll be missing out on a few of the features that the new editor has. Um, such as being able to change the filter type, um, some preview options, as well as some of the content options. So I highly recommend the new editor if you haven't checked it out already. Um, sky's the limit with customizing your emails. They're a lot more mobile responsive. Um, and once, it, once you kind of get into the hang of it, I find that the workflow is, is um, a lot easier. Can I upload an iPhone video? Um, so kind of go back to that earlier question. So um, since you can't embed the video inside the email, that, that iPhone video would need to be hosted somewhere. So um, it would need to be like on YouTube or maybe like a Google Drive that's publicly shared or your website. Um, but that video would have to be somewhere that's not hosted or should I say loaded in that email template. So in, in that case of the iPhone video, if, if there's a way you could put that on your website, or if you have an organization's YouTube or Vimeo account, I would recommend that. Um, and then when you're in your campaign email, it'd just be a matter of um, using that video content block and linking to where you are hosting that video. So I could drag that video block in here and then let's say you're hosting on YouTube or Vimeo, then you could just paste it in there and that should pop up.
Hey, Scott. Diana yeah. here. Um, Hi, Diana. We do have a question as well. If you could show us real quick um, yeah. in your filters. So if you already have the filter set up, but you want to exclude a handful of constituents sure. that are appearing in the filters, can you show us how to use the find constituents filter yeah, um, to remove those constituents from that email? Yeah. Thank you. Great. I see that that's chat questions now. So yes. So let's say you are, um, in your campaign email here, and, and I'm pulling everyone in my report, and maybe I just noticed, you know what, I don't need um, Rocky Balboa and Big Bird in here. And for some reason, there's no way to really just, there's nothing that's linking all these people together other than just, um, you know from um, just seeing their name, they, they don't need to receive this email. So if I click this blue or, and I'm already in constituent filters, um, so then I'll look up uh, find constituents. And now I could type in the name, the email address, or the, even the account number if I know that offhand. So in this case, I'm just looking up Rocky. And I'm also going to look up Big Bird. So once I click OK, those two will now be removed. So now you'll see they are out of this list. So the find constituent, that's the, that's the best filter to use when you're looking for a specific people to either include or exclude out of your, your filters or your reports. Yeah, great question. Thanks everyone for um, being very interactive today and asking lots of questions and using the polls. Um, thanks to Diana for fielding questions and, and getting us in the right spot. So thanks so much. Um, stay safe everyone and we will see you soon.